All right, we are back uh, on the brink of our last game of the evening, and uh, we had uh, four games before us, uh, the last one ending 2 nothing. First one that uh, ended in 2 nothing uh, for the time being, but uh, as we have our fifth and uh, final game of the evening, it is a Protoss versus Zerg matchup, and it is going to be next Garnet versus uh, Czech Prime, and uh, one of these uh, players at least uh, quite famous uh, as well in uh, RTS game circles. Yeah, he's a... Uh former, or I don't know if he changed com game completely, but he was a former Walker 3 pro, and he was like Lin, who played earlier today, very famous, very good player, and I know he's been playing a lot of soccer too, he's like high ranked in the ladder, so I'm expecting good games. Okay, well when you look at uh, people that have made the crossover, uh, let's say in RTS games from uh, Warcraft 3 to Starcraft 2, or Starcraft to Starcraft 2, would you say that one has the advantage over the other? Definitely the people that are coming from Starcraft 1 has has an advantage because the game is very similar. The, the basic idea of how to approach the game, the management style is about the same. I mean, there are some differences, but from a Walker 3 gamer, I mean, it's basically what you get from Walker 3 is that you have the basic knowledge of what an RTS game is, and you have the mechanics probably so-so, uh, but still there's you need to focus much more on economy for mo much more on management much more on timing windows uh, where whereas in walk of Thieves, it's much more about your heroes your micro and yeah it's, it's a it's a totally different game to be honest okay well uh, we're going to move on to uh, this fifth uh, game in a moment uh, between one of the more famous warcraft 3 players that being uh, check prime and his opponent is going to be a protoss player uh, next garnet uh, should be an interesting game to look at and uh, I believe uh, both players are uh, standing by we're going to uh, take a look coming okay well we're still waiting for <laughs> word on the match but uh, well, uh, let's uh, go back and look uh, the Sony Ericsson Starcraft 2 uh, GSL open we are into the round of 64 this is actually day three of the round of 64 so uh, just a little bit more to go before we're into the round of 32 and see some more of these players. Let's look at our players for this uh, fifth and final match of the evening and this is Min Kyung Hwan, known as Nex Garnet. He is a Protoss player and uh, let's see, he is 25 years of age. The map that he likes the best is Jungle Basin, which is not on our list for today. He loves using Dark Templars and also uh, well, like a lot of people uh, players that he looks up to is a uh, fruit dealer, um, probably uh, no nothing new there. His uh, opponent, uh, as uh, we mentioned before, is going to be Czech Prime. Uh, he is uh, more well known, perhaps, for his uh, Warcraft 3 achievements, but uh, certainly uh, a player in his own right using the Zerg race. Uh, Went to the round of 16 in uh, the, the GSL Season 1, so he's uh, no uh, no slouch when it comes to uh, advancing on in tournaments like this. Uh, he has been there before, and it's just a matter of uh, getting back to where he already was. Lee Hyung Ju, Czech Prime, standing by to take on next Garnet. Okay, so there are the players that uh, we've had a look at. Um, I think uh, probably the fan favorite as well as uh, most people's uh, favorites, if you're a betting man on this, will probably go back to the old school. Someone who's been to the Final 16 before, someone who's played a lot of RTS, who's who's also played in studio settings before. Check Prime, I'm sure, has got to be the favorite for most people. Yeah, I think so. I mean, he's a solid player. I mean, he's played a lot of games. He's high ranked in the ladder. He came to run a 16 last time. So definitely, he's the favorite. And with the Zerg... Zerg is being really strong this version, so, yeah. Okay, let's take a look at the maps that we're going to be using. Uh, first one is going to be Zelnaga Caverns for set number one. Set new, set two is uh, Metalopolis, as uh, set three is going to be Lost Temple. Maps that were uh, taken out. Next Garnet wanted Scrap Station and Shakur's Plateau out. Check Prime deleted Delta Quadrant and Steps 
of War. So those are the maps that are going to be used in this uh, Protoss versus Zerg matchup. Uh, that's what we just saw a moment ago in uh, game number four uh, of the evening as well. Uh, let's talk about the maps that we're going to be using uh, for this. Uh, we already saw uh, Metalopolis and uh, Lost uh, Temple. We're going to be seeing uh, Zelnaga Caverns between these two for the first time, and that will be for the first set. Yeah, and I mean, S Service of Progress is a very balanced matchup in my opinion, even on, on most maps. Sunlight and Caverns, I personally haven't played that much, but I've seen it a lot, and I know that there's a big open, the expansion is very open for harassment, but I mean, that's from both sides, Sir can run in with speed lanes, Protoss can come in with, uh, with their strong 4-gate push, and so I think this is a very balanced map, for what I know. Okay, well let's find out in set number one. All right, uh, as we take a look down at the 7 o'clock region, next Garnet is our red Protoss player. Well, and he's got uh, certainly a lot of fans here as uh, they're here to check him out. And uh, over on the other side, Czech Prime is over at the upper right corner. Is He is the blue Zerg. And uh, once again, a lot of fans for him as well. All right, so uh, we've seen uh, Metalopolis. We've seen uh, Lost Temple uh, in a PVZ in our previous match. But uh, this is going to be our first look at uh, Zelnaga Caverns. And uh, both, both players... Scout, oh, actually, well, the Overlord uh, scouting uh, diagonally all the way to the other side. Two-player map, I'm guessing. Yeah, it's a two-player map. You're not going to see anything exciting. Uh, Czech is so good. is a good player, solid player. So he knows he's going to fast. I know he's going to fast his back because he knows that's totally safe opening on this map. And uh, and I'm guessing the Protoss is going to go one gate core into expansion. Uh, I will believe either that or he'll do a four gate. But I, I think he'll go core core gate expansion. Gate core expansion. This map. Starcraft 1 in a, in a Protoss versus Zerg, you usually see uh, Protoss um, expand as well to a fast nexus or sometimes say forge and then cannon nexus or forge nexus. Um, but I uh, don't really see that as much in Starcraft 2. Is, is it more common to go with a, a core? Yeah, because in Starcraft 2 there are more options for a Protoss when the core is finished. Uh, what was very popular back in the better days, the early games, was to just go f straight up work gate tech get four gates and make a proxy pilot and just push the Zerg uh, while they were vulnerable after class expansion but they didn't have enough units to defend because the gateway units of the Crawler is very strong against both Zerglings and Roaches. Uh, so, but lately people have been adapting and they know that the Zerg is fast expanding so one popular opening has been actually go one gate, one forge and do a proxy cannon rush with Zealots when the Zerg is uh, fast expanding and that is very hard to defend on certain maps, certain spawn positions, but on this map, I think because you two-player map, the distance is pretty far, you're going to see pretty standard play from both of them. The infamous Cheese Cannon Rush. <laughs> oh boy. Well, Cybernet's core is done. Uh, one, one Zealot out to uh, cut off the choke point, making sure that uh, nothing else is going to get in. Doesn't really matter for Czech Prime, however, as an Overlord is almost uh, right at the base. He's going to take a look at what is going on in that base of uh, next Garnet. And Sentry on the way. Another gateway being added by uh, Garnet. Just giving a little game of tag here. Probes being chased away. Robotics. Robotics facility in there for Garnet. Zealot is guarding the entranceway. Gatekeeper says no to the Zerglings. 
This could be either a timing push with Immortals or nah. I think this is gonna be a he's gonna do a try to do a timing push with two gate two, two gateway, three gateway plus a robotics, but he's gonna be scouted now. Nah. And check uh, sacrifices and overlord to get the necessary information. Uh, that was definitely worth the sacrifice, seeing that he has two gateways and uh, robotics. It gives a lot of in the egg of good intel for the search there. There's another gateway. Robotics bay underway. Are we looking at a Colossus coming then? Yeah, of course it's going to be a Colossus. Three gates, Colossus. From one base. I don't know if I like this play. Um, I'm not a certain uh, Protoss player myself, but... I find that this is a little bit too all inish. If your first attack fails, it's pretty much over. And the Zerg that has just scouted you knows about this. He's seen the robotics. He's seen your gateway count. He probably knows your strategy and will prepare for it. And knows that if he survives this, he no he scouts no expansion. So he just needs to survive this strong attack, and he knows he has the game wrapped up. So if you know that he's going with the Colossus, uh, what's your strategy as a Zerg to defend that? Well, you, you can't know for sure that he's going Colossus, but just make a bunch of If units. you were to know. Yeah, if yeah. You, just make a bunch of uh, units like Roaches and Hydra. Uh, especially now that the Roaches got a buff. Actually, a Roaches-Hydra combination is viable because now the Roaches is not only meat shield, it actually can fire back before they die. So... I think he'll go for a mass roach hydra or mass yeah mass roach hydra. Well, indeed, roaches uh, are complete and coming out in numbers uh, for check, as you mentioned. Uh, meanwhile, stalkers, sentry, and uh, zealots uh, there for uh, garnet. As we take a look, overseer as well for check. I mean, still, I mean, check. The only reason why he does this with the Sturgeons is just to see the Nexus timing. And he sees there is no Nexus. So he, he, he knows that this is, like, going to be a strong push coming soon and can prepare for it. I mean, look, if you look at the bases, he only has two ga garrisons up. That means he needs a lot of minerals for his roaches. He needs a big army right now, and he knows it. And two Colossus uh, on the way, and... A little bit of harassment going after the uh, pylon. Gets the pylon. Those Zerglings might be uh, better served back home now, though, and wisely heads back in. Uh, here is the push. Zerglings from the backside. Plenty of uh, roaches there as well from both sides. Sentry puts up a uh, shield as well, force field. And pretty much just left with the uh, Colossus there. A few more uh, Stalkers underneath. Queen comes out to help. Zergling's there as well. <laughs> and both of the Colossus are down. As that is going to force uh, Garnet to retreat. And that's the question. Is that all in? It certainly looks like it, and as you mentioned, uh, does he have another option after this? And looking at his base, uh, well, looking at these Zerglings and units heading down to his base anyways, I don't know if uh, there's going to be much there. A couple of Stalkers and a Zealot at the choke point, but uh, Roaches, let's see uh, how much uh, damage they can do. Yep, they're going to be able to get in there, and this uh, is probably going to be GG, as you mentioned. Yeah, he skipped the Hydras because he, he knew that he needed the army faster, and getting Hydras, he required him to get more gas. And, so. and there is the GG, so Czech goes on to tank this first set, and uh, I might add rather easily, a little bit uh, disappointing, I think you were mentioning uh, that exactly, that you would have liked to have seen him go with a different strategy that might have had a, a, a way out.
Um, perhaps a, another option, but uh, he went for basically what was an all-in push, and obviously Czech knew that it was coming. This is kind of the problem for some Korean players. And they, they are really good at practicing routine strategy, and they are mechanically very good. But they practice and practice and practice certain strategy, and if that strategy doesn't work, they have no other alternative. Cause they have only practice this one. Like this attack is gonna work or not, I'm gonna lose. And they have no way of adapting. And I mean he got scouted very early, even before the robotics was finished. Uh, he knew the check knew that he was going robotics. He knew the check knew that he had two gateways. And I mean that's about the time where I would be thinking like, okay, this this is not gonna work doing doing what I originally thought so I might have to change change this out, you know? Yeah. Okay, well, there's the story in set number one. Let's see if there's uh, any difference in set number two.